Hi, I'm Mrs. Wilkins and welcome to Malmesbury Science. Today we're going to determine the magnetic flux density of a magnet. If you run a current through a wire within a magnetic field, then there will be a force acting on the wire. The force applied to the wire will be equal to the magnetic flux density times the current running through the wire times the length of the wire within the field. You might know this as the f bill equation. This equation is true if the wire is perpendicular to the field. To determine the magnetic flux density, you can change uh, different variables. One variable you could change would be the length of the wire. However, this is quite tricky to do because each time you change the length of the wire, the wire will move and be in a different position, so it might not be a constant magnetic field. On that note, we have actually clamped the wire here today to keep it as stable as possible. Therefore, we're going to investigate our independent variable as the current flowing through the wire. We've got our wire, it's a quite a thick copper wire, and we've placed it within uh, two magnets that are set in a cradle. And you'll notice that we've now put the cradle onto a balance. It was what we used to measure the force applied to the wire, but it's actually going to give us the mass. Then we've connected the wire into a circuit where we've got the power supply here. And then we also have a variable resistor here. And this will help us vary the current flowing through the wire. And of course, we've got an ammeter. We're going to start at 0.5 amps and we're going to take it at intervals of 0.5 amps all the way up to 5 amps. The reason that this works is when I turn the power on and a current runs through the wire, the wire will experience a force upwards. And due to Newton's third law, uh, equal and opposite forces, we will see the force pushing downwards as the mass on the balance. Since our independent variable is the current running through the wire, we need to keep the length of the wire constant. So this is actually equal to the length of the magnet. Um, the length of the magnetic field that the wire is running through. And I've measured this with a vernier caliper, and it's exactly five centimeters. So now we're ready to take our readings. And I'm going to take one set of readings, but actually it's really good practice to take three sets of readings and then take an average. Before we start, and before I run a current through the wire, uh, I can see that the balance is already showing a mass um, of the cradle and the magnets. Um, so I need to tear this so that we start it at zero. This will ensure that the mass taken is only due to the force acting on the wire. Turn the power on and run the current through the wire. So we've varied the variable resistor so that we have a current of 0 0.50 amps. And we can take our reading on the scale as 0.11 grams. Now we're going to increase the current to 1 amp. We have a current of 1 amp. And the reading is 0.22 grams. We've gone all the way to 5 amps, and here is our set of data. We're now going to draw our graph, and we could um, draw our graph of force against current. However, we then have to times the mass by 9.81, and it gives us some um, numbers that are tricky to plot on a graph. So to make it simpler, we're going to plot the mass against the current, and then we'll take this into account when calculating the magnetic flux density. When we measured the mass, it was in grams, but it's easier if you plot them as kilograms on your graph. So just do um, times 10 to the minus 3. Our plots show quite a nice uh, straight line through the origin. We can see that our gradient is equal to the mass divided by the current. So if we then take our equation, F equals B times I times L, of course we're looking at Mg equals B times I times L. So if we take our gradient as M divided by I, that is equal to B times L divided by G. We've calculated our gradient as 2.2 times 10 to the minus 4. We now times this by g, 9.81, and divide by the length of the wire, which was 0 0.05 meters. And this gives us a value of 0 0.043 teslas, or 43 milliteslas. We can now compare our value with a value taken with a magnetic probe, also known as a Hall probe. We can see that it gives us a reading of 50 milliteslas. We can use this value then um, and compare it against our value to find a percentage error in our value. 